chocolate you can do it. Right here. Oh, that was good. All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, today, our speaker is Megan Maris. She comes to us from Miller Coors. Uh, she has been on their sensory analysis team. You are currently a trader, right? You do small pilot batch stuff. Um, and she recently passed her own certified sensory exam in earlier this year. Yep. So, um, ask any questions you have for her. We're going to go over kind of the idea today is we talked a lot about flavors, a lot about regular flavors, but now we're talking about where they come from. Um, so before we get into off flavors, which I know is something that everybody's kind of nervous about, interested in getting into, you should explain where the correct flavors come from first. So uh, Megan's going to walk us through a lot. Um, it's not going to be so much visual as it is going to be, you know, tactile and tasting and eating stuff. So Evan will be here with dinner whenever he gets here. Um, but we're going to go ahead and get started. So thanks, Mary. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for coming, guys. I appreciate it. Um, uh, so like Charles said, uh, Megan Mary, I've been with Miller Coors about seven years. I started in our sensory program. So uh, we have a corporate taste panel that I kind of trained and ran a lot of those programs. Um, I was a pilot brewer for three years before that, so I ran our dual 40 liter system. So I developed everything under the Miller Coors portfolio, including uh, Smith & Forge, Line of Googles, the Henry Soda Line, uh, and Breads. I'm now a trade brewer, so I do educational events. Um, I do beer and food pairing. I do um, kind of random stuff that anybody asks me to do. So if you have any questions about brewing or tasting or anything like that, let me know. Um, so we'll go through an hour of flavors and kind of where they come from and talk about that. And um, we'll also, obviously, I'm sure you guys guess we're going to be tasting and smelling and eating a lot of stuff today. So we'll go through that and kind of talk about where these come from. Um, I have three beers that we'll go through together and kind of try to pull some of these things out of. Um, and then I'll open up for questions. I just took my sister on in February. I found out I passed in March. So if you guys have any questions regarding that, I know. Um, you guys yeah, will probably <laughs> yeah. um, but I give you guys some tips on what I wish I would have studied a little bit more and what uh, worked well for me. So uh, we can get started. So in front of you guys, we have two things. We have one, um, this flavor wheel. So part of this process for me was one, um, just kind of learning all the terminology, right? So it's easy enough to call something malty, but learning how to break it down into calling out those specific attributes of things like water crackery, bready, rye bread, grainy, uh, and things like that. So this is always a good cheat sheet for me when you start to kind of talk about flavors and it really isolates them into aromatic, to nutty, to fatty, to sulfury, and things like that. So just something I like to keep on hand and kind of hand out, um, bring out at parties and impress my friends, things like that. Um, this other sheet, it's pretty dry. This other sheet I gave you is also something I found super helpful. So again, it's just learning that language. Uh, I'm sure you guys have all had most of these things at some point in time, um, but it's kind of a way of training your brain to recognize that's what it is um, and that's where it comes from. So we're going to be tasting a lot of stuff today. I want this to be very uh, interactive, very vocal. So the cool thing about tasting is everyone does it differently, um, and some things you might be tasting that someone might not be tasting, or someone might be tasting it and just not know what to call it. Um, so I've had people in class during beer and go, this tastes like a steak. And I'm like, steak? Oh, unami, savory. Okay, I can kind of get where you're coming from. Um, there are things on here too that, to me, um, like uh, DMS tastes like cream corn. So kind of getting that language, kind of getting um, that dialogue, uh, I always find very helpful. So uh, what I'm going to do uh, is I'm going to pass out some things. We're going to eat it. We're going to kind of talk about, well, not all of it. I've been in, so don't eat those. Um, we're just going to talk about what they come, you know, what they taste like, um, kind of where they come from. Um, just kind of go through it out loud. So in front of you, you have plates and you have spoons. Um, all this stuff I got from a store. I promise I didn't mistreat it, so you guys can definitely eat it. So um, we're going to start out with some of the pale malts. Um, which I'm sure you guys have probably seen or probably had before, uh, and also some water crackers. So I'll just ask that you guys kind of put a little bit on your plate, um, and we'll kind of taste them together and kind of talk about some of the attributes that we're getting and talk about some of the beers we might see some of these in, um, and kind of go from there. And you should have multiple plates too, so we're going to have kind of a lot of stuff. Also, I'm not taking any of this home, so if there's anything you want after this, you're more than welcome to have. Wait, these versions. If anybody wants to top shop for their kitchen later, I have a good amount of ingredients. Cinnamon. No, I didn't bring cinnamon. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
It's on the list, but I was like, hey, everyone's probably smelled cinnamon before. Like, no, I'm not. Yeah. yeah. That's what the spoons were. <laughs> okay, so let's, uh, as you're kind of going through, let's start with some of that pale malt. As you're getting there. Yeah. So typically, um, as a brewer, we would eat all the malt uh, before we started to brew with it to kind of get an idea of what that flavor profile is. So uh, it seems kind of funny that we're just, you know, picking up random malt and eating it, but it's something that people do all the time. So like I said, especially during recipe development, um, any incoming malt, we always tasted to make sure the quality was kind of up to par and um, it had some things that we were looking for. So actually, why don't we start with the water crackers, since everybody seems to have those. So why don't we eat one of the water crackers to kind of talk about um, some of the things that we're getting. What kind of attributes are you guys picking up in the, in the water cracker? A little toasty. A little toasty, yep. Yeah. Maybe a little malty, a little bready, kind of like a flower note to it. How about the texture of it? Is it dry? Very dry. Not so very dry, right? So, um, a little dryness, a little astringency on it. So what kind of beers do you think that you would see this uh, flavor profile in? Definitely your lighter style style lagers. Yep, your lighter style lagers. Um, to me, I pick this up in a lot of German pilsners, right? So it's a very dry um, style beer to begin with. So a lot of that, and the water cracker to me is very specific. So that that dry, bready, kind of clean wheat note um, is present in a lot of pilsners, in particular German pilsners for me. Um, so it's good to kind of know what these taste like because a water cracker versus bready versus malty can all be a little bit different. How about the pale malt? What are you guys getting there? Grape nuts. Grape nuts. Yeah, I hear that a lot. Is that a whole pants or a little bit of grape nuts? Sure. There's a weird, like, sweetness to it. Mm-hmm. Do you guys learn about uh, malt and ingredients yet? Mm, yes, ingredients are next. Ingredients are next, okay. So that, that sweetness is a lot of those long chain um, starches that'll be broken down later, but yeah, definitely a, a nice sweetness, grape nuts, um, kind of almost like a earthy, like not metallic, but like kind of like a metal-ish. Vegetable character. Yeah, vegetative kind of character to it. Maybe a hint of pretzel? A little bit of pretzel, yep, definitely getting that too. So this is something that's in almost all beers, right? So a lot of base beers use this type of pale malt um, as a base. So this will kind of be present in a lot of different styles of beers, pale beers, pilsners, um, a lot of your lagers, a lot of your lighter beers will have this kind of uh, grape nutty, you know, earthy type uh, taste to it. All right, let's go with the wheat next. I apologize, I should have um, prompted you guys to bring water because sometimes when you eat all, like it gets all stuck in the back of my throat. What are you guys getting with this one? I think it's drier than the two roll. Definitely, definitely drier. I would get that. Kind of visual sweetness to it. Mm -hmm. It's still sweet, but to me, it's more of like a darker sweetness, like a darker sugar kind of. Yeah. What else are you guys getting? Anyway. Reminds me of exactly like a popcorn kernel. Oh, yeah. Without, I like the, that. without the actual fluffy part mm -hmm. before. Yeah, like those weird unpopped ones that yeah. you get in yeah. the bottom of the bag. They're yeah. like, eh, I'm so hungry, so I'm gonna eat these anyways. <laughs> Definitely. Sorry, a lot of drunken nights. 
No, this is this is really special. They're like, oh, I have it so hard. That's what I mean. I mean, the lot of drugs. No, and this is perfect. Like I said, a lot of times people obviously perceive flavors differently, but um, to have to like, if you taste this now and you have a beer, and you're like, it kind of tastes like popcorn kernels. Like you know, like it's probably got some wheat in it. So a lot of this is taking time to try to connect those dots. Um, and we're gonna talk about some of those other ones that to me are like totally off the wall and like, oh, okay, this is what I smell like. So it's maybe training yourself to kind of identify what those flavors are. All right, what about the oats? Is it different than the other malts that you guys tasted? Very dry. Very dry. Kind of dissipates in the mouth, like you don't really have to do anything. Yeah, it's kind of like just breaks out a little yeah. bit for you. That amylase in your mouth is kind of already doing its job. So it's like more clean, I guess. Clean. So missing a lot of those earthy yeah. vegetative kind of notes that we were getting in some of the other ones. Definitely, yeah, not as sweet. Um, I like oats yeah, What's that? I, mean, I feel like oats, but this is a terrible, useless thing to say. They're very oaty. You know, <laughs> they just have a very distinct yeah. it's like oat oh, characteristic to them. Yeah, they have, like you smell them like that. Like that. Right. Once you have them, you know what they are. <coughs> Absolutely. So we have the rest of the malts. These are a little uh, on the heavier end. Um, so just a forewarning, some of them are kind of weird. So anything surprise you about the first couple ones we tasted while we're passing the rest around? Anything now that you're like, oh, you know, you, you taste it, that kind of makes sense to things that you've seen before in here, but maybe you just haven't been able to pull out or describe. I always joke too, uh, when we first, like when I first started doing this, and I first started learning, there's things on here that I just hadn't smelled before, so I used to go into spice stores all the time, and just be real creepy and just like smell everything and tell her like, ma'am, are you gonna buy something or are you just hanging out in here? And if you need more plates or spoons or anything, let me know. What are you guys getting in this one? What, like furniture and soup? complexity in the flavor, right? So a little bit darker flavor notes, so getting a little bit more of the honey, molasses, raisin type notes. Definitely leaves the mouth coating, right? So a little bit of astringency almost in your mouth. Definitely. I have more malt up here if you would like any. I'll get some in a minute. Okay. Oh, so good. <laughs> so what else are you guys getting with the uh, Caramel 60? I know, sorry, you're gonna be like having like roasty. mold particles everywhere. Slight roast. Slight roast, yeah, definitely. I think it finishes that, that finish a lot longer than the layer coated mold. Yep, absolutely. So longer finish is kind of like even though I ate it maybe because it's good and still still lingering on my tongue. So those roasty type notes to it. Maybe a little woody almost. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. Definitely different than the pale malt, though, right? So definitely a lot more complex. Syrupy? Syrupy? Yeah, absolutely. That's a great descriptor. Okay, um, let's 
do the smoked one next. Has anybody had the smoked one before? So right off the bat, what are you getting? I'm sure I saw a lot of you guys smelling the bag. So smoked. I'm saying hickory. Anderson and Harry Campfire. Very campfire. Tastes like a hot dog. Hot dog. Really bad black coffee, right? So some of those burnt notes might not turn into you. Uh, to me this tastes like bacon smells. No, no, no. Yeah, but definitely different, right? A lot of earthy, uh, again, a lot more complex notes. So it's sweet. Well, it's a lot sweeter. It's yeah. just one to really jump out. That's not what I'm it's not it's just like, like, like one yeah. I'm just like, I know what that tastes like. Yeah, you like yeah. open the bag and you're like, this is definitely smoked malt. Yeah. <laughs> it is a <laughs> so let's go to the last malt that we have in front of us. So this will be the black strip. Hey, <laughs> yeah, less, less is more with this one. It's like coffee. <laughs> We're warning again. Oh, coffee. Right? Yeah. Straight right. in like mouthful of little spoon. Coffee, yeah. Oh, they wow. chewing coffee grounds. Is, yeah. This is what happens when you microwave popcorn when you're drunk and you forget about it. And it's just like it burns yeah. through. So these aren't the, the good seeds at the bottom of the bag. These are the bird seeds that you're lucky your house sits around fire making. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So very burnt, woody. very woody, bitter, bitter, bitter. black prints. Yep. Mm -hmm. Very stringent. This one definitely sticks on your mouth. What specific styles would be used? So any of your porters, mm -hmm. anything like a Schwartz beer, um, and these are used in a very, very small amount. So um, with darker malts, a little goes a lot longer than you think it will. So in something like a Schwartz beer, um, this malt would be maybe. 5% of the total malt bill, so tiny, tiny amount. Um, yeah, any porters, um, maybe a little bit in some Doppelbox, uh, maybe a little bit in porters, but not a whole lot, right? Porters tend to have more roasted than the, that burnt toasted techno to it. All right. Now, <coughs> now that I've completely ruined your guys' challenge, and don't feel like you have to. Like if you know, I'm sure you guys have all had honey before at some point in time. So if you, if you don't want to take it, don't feel <coughs> obligated. Um, it's just kind of talking about, um, kind of a little bit about what happens when you get some sweeter malt notes, when things are less attenuated um, or less fermented out. Um, or as malt starts to age, you'll start to get a lot of these characteristics too. Um, and it's important to know that these are coming from the malt. So, May you mentioned like malt age. What are the age of the malts that we're currently chewing on? So these are fresh malts. So I got these from the homebrew store on Tuesday. Okay. Very, very fresh. Um, when malt, uh, when, like malts, melodonins, or some of the, the chemicals in malts are exposed to oxygen over a long period of time, that's where you get some of these flavors for. So if you have a beer that's oxidized, and you guys are gonna do off flavors next week, know that some of those oxidation factors taste like things like molasses, like honey, like raisin. And those are actually coming from the way malt ages. Um, or it can just come from certain malt types um, that are less attenuated, so less fermented out. So let's taste the raisin first. Again, like I'm sure you guys have all, like this is probably bring you back to like preschool or you had these in your lunchbox, but what kind of uh, flavors are you getting from the raisins? Tastes like a raisin. Tastes like a raisin. So, so sweet. It's very sweet. So grape-like character. So grape-like, yeah. <laughs> getting a slight, uh, like tannic quality from the skins. Sure. I find it so hard that it's like when you drink beer 
and you think it like, oh, like, this is raisin. So now I'm like eating a raisin, and I'm like, I can't think of any description. <laughs> <laughs> it tastes like a raisin. It's kind of like, oh, it's right. Like there, are some of those, some of those flavors are just like root flavors. You know, like raisins taste like raisins. Like, yeah. It's, it's kind of hard to like dissect that further down. I mean, some of these you can, but. Yeah, and then and the important thing to take away from this is, right, so we're gonna eat a lot of these, so it's just kind of training your brain to be able to isolate those flavors, right? Because you get a beer and sometimes it can be so complex and have so much stuff going on. So it's kind of teaching you guys to be able to pick out certain attributes that you might be tasting. Sweet and dark purple fruit. Sweet, yeah, but and that's a definitely Base, a strip that kind of. Yep, dark fruit, sherry, um, raisin, sweet, tannic kind of qualities that you get in some beer. What do you like tannic? What? So tannins are found in essentially, I know, I, I, I always like hear white people be like, oh, this is so tannic. And I'm like, you probably don't know what that means. But, um, it's red. So oh, I forget the same white. Here. Sorry. I, I get in so many arguments why. So I have like a, I do this a lot to wine people, but I love them. I, I, I feel like I don't know how the wine, so I can pick out people. Um, so tannins are, are found in a lot of organic fruits and vegetables, and typically they're on the skin. Um, so if you have uh, um, like barley that you heat up, a lot of those tannins can transfer and they leave like a mouth coating, astringency, um, not hard, it can be harsh, yeah. um, but kind of like an aggressive drying, mouth coating, astringency type thing going on. Um, okay, what about the molasses? What are you guys getting from that? I use this exact same molasses for molasses root beer. Do you want to take it home with you? Because I was like, I don't even know what I would do with this if I took it home. Oh. All the pancakes. You put molasses on your pancakes? You never had like, you never had that? No. It's so good. Do you want to take molasses? <laughs> <laughs> it's up for grabs. We'll split it. Do you, do you mix it with anything, or is it just pure molasses? With pancake. That just seems like way too aggressive. I don't know. Like molasses has that like really kind of like. Burnt vegetables, sugar cane byproduct, like characteristic to it. Yep. Urban. Yeah, right. This is like a joke you play on someone where you swap out their maple syrup for molasses and hope they don't notice, and then they take a big bite and they're like, oh my god. <laughs> Anderson would be in heaven. <laughs> yes, okay. Okay, so what are you guys getting? So I heard uh, a lot of really good. Sugar cane scoop. Sugar cane? Getting a lot that vegetable kind of mm -hmm. almost earthy, it. it's yeah. got foam to it. Burnt sugar, yeah, like if you yeah. left like sugar and boiled it for too long, maybe. Yeah. It's also kind of dry. It's sweet, but it's also like it's has that a dry. Same that we were talking about earlier. Yep, a certain <coughs> finish to it. It's like soy sauce with like salt. So that maybe a little bit of unami type savory flavor going on. <laughs> I'll leave you with the jar. Um, okay, and the honey, I'm sure you guys have all had that before, but very sweet, um, almost like a like a crystal sugar type note to it. Like a floral, is making any floral notes? A little bit. A little floral. Maybe like a, when you're blowing bubbles, that is so neat. So, so bubbles, yeah, okay, I can, I'll apply that. They're coffee, so. I gotta rewind my brain. 20 years the last time I was blowing bubbles. So I think they would like you, we get uh, it out. Yeah. Little clove, yeah. 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 <laughs> like, uh that's your bad. Appreciate it. <laughs> okay. Do you guys have any questions about malt or is there anything, um, any of the flavors that you have now and you can kind of identify those as being malt flavors, whereas before you kind of didn't know where they were coming from? Okay. And we'll taste, we'll taste a very malt-forward beer to kind of talk about some of these flavors that we find. Um, so we're going to move on to hot flavors. Um, so definitely a wide variety, right? So you have American hops that tend to be very floral, tropical, piney, citrusy. English hops tend to be tea-like, earthy. Uh, the noble hops tend to be floral. So I didn't pick any hops with me because you can smell them, but if you taste them, like they're, they're not so great. Although I had some SMPs eat hops last night. It was That's like, good you, for about two weeks. What are you doing with your life right now? Um, so um, I'm going to pass these out. 
again, like I'm sure you guys have had grapefruit at one point in time, um, but even if you don't want to eat it, just smell it, kind of uh, get familiar with that specific isolated uh, aromatic or flavor type note. Uh, yeah, again, I'm not expecting you guys to like be hammering down lines right now. Yeah, um, I wish. <clears throat> It needs to like nail it. Give me a cut. Fine. We need to get to go. Chandler, you might. Some might say. Yeah. 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 I didn't know how many people there were too, so I kind of guessed and also figured that some people like eat grapefruit and cake pumpkins and lime, or at least are familiar enough with them um, where they don't necessarily have to eat them. Um, so the other thing with some of these is you'll notice on the bottom um, of these it says some modifiers. So here's where you get to the difference of really breaking down flavor profiles. So something like a, a lemon. Is it lemonade? Is it fresh squeezed yeah. lemon juice? Is it a bruised lemon? Is it the lemon peel? So start to identify some of the various parts of that. Um, <coughs> same thing with lime. Is it fresh squeezed lime? Is it limeade? Is it uh, one of those like weird lime popsicles that you had when you were little? Is it um, like a Sprite type soda? Is it lime peel? Is it the fleshy part of the lime? <laughs> so I won't spend a lot of time talking about the grapefruit, the lemon, and the lime. Again, I'm sure you guys are all very familiar with what these are. But like I said, just really paying attention to the different aromatics that are coming from different parts of it. Um, and kind of all the things that encompass lime, right? So it's easy to be like, this smells like lemon. When you start breaking down those individual flavor components is where you start being able to identify some of the complexity and start to get a lot more specific. So the apricot rings, um, the, uh, there's a couple new hops that are coming out that are really popular. Um, the one's called uh, Amarillo Hop. I'm sure you guys probably heard it before. Yeah. No, <laughs> just never heard it before. Um, to me, every time I smell this hop, it smells exactly like these peach apricot gummy rings. Um, and when I, you start seeing it, I mean, you're starting to see obviously the ton of craft beer, so being able to kind of maybe not use this, but being able to pick out that this type of aromatic, this type of flavor is coming from that specific Amarillo hop. Also, I love this candy, so I feel like yeah. Anytime I get excuse to eat this, I'm laughing. Citra throws off a lot of peach. Citra throws off a lot of peach. Absolutely. This is a zaka, like this. Oh, yeah. oh a zaka yeah. too. Yeah. Yep. Dip this in water and I have the zaka. Zaka, yeah, absolutely. So being well to identify that. Um, black currant um, is something that you see a lot too. <laughs> it's kind of like actual like black black currant is super hard to find. Um, but you're seeing this in a lot of hops. Um, it's coming in a lot of ciders now too, so being able to identify this. Um, a lot of hops can come across as black currant, and sometimes black currant to me can go into like the caddy family. So um, that tomcat urine type aromatic that comes from some very aggressive hops. Um, and this are always really, really close to me. I don't know if like when I was little, like my cat peed on some black currant and now it's stuck in my head, but um, a lot of the times people describe things as caddy, um, and a lot of that can be closely related to black currant. So. Have, have you brewed with actual black currants before? Um, I have done a lot of work with flavors, but and not Do you find like black currants also kind of lend like a purpose to? Yeah, if you brew with them? Yeah. Yeah, if you brew with them, a lot of the, like, the sweetness and the fruit gets mm -hmm. uh, fermented out, so you're sure. just left with like some aromatic that's a lot of it gets scrubbed away during Similar the Similar to that, like raspberry tartness. Yeah, like raspberry that. tartness, like that mouth puckering, like right. kind of back of your throat type um, finish to it. Are you guys getting anything else in any of these more fruity components that I didn't mention? Yep, I guess black <coughs> currant is uh, pretty popular in England, so a lot of like English uh, type ciders, you'll see this a lot. 
Um, you see it a lot more in the American market now. I know we messed around with it as Miller Coors for a while, but if you're not familiar with black currant, it's kind of hard to explain what it is. So it was a challenge for you're running into. Okay. I feel like the big difference from the citrus that you'll see in beer is like pulp or flesh versus mm -hmm. like the peel. Yep. Um, with like the sweetness coming out of the actual like flesh of it, whereas the peel is more of that kind of acidic, light, mm -hmm. bright character note to it. Yep, absolutely. Even too, like, you see like a lot of gozas in the market too that if they're like a watermelon, is it like it'll be like either a juicy watermelon or like the watermelon rind type part or like a green watermelon. Like there's specific flavor components that you can start to see in different types of styles and they all come across super different. Okay, perfect. Um, so I have um, some of these. Um, obviously, you can just smell them. I, I mean, if you want to take some chamomile, there's chamomile and thyme. <coughs> Um, also fennel uh, and sage. So feel free to just smell these. You obviously, I'm not going to eat sage unless you want to. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, so you, you kind of have three diff different uh, and distinct hop characteristics, right? So they kind of talks about like the fruity, um, floral type notes. Um, here are some examples of the green and the earthy notes. So you get some of that. Um, oh, I did. Like I said, depending on the type of hop that you're using um, and the variety, uh, you can get a lot more of these either floral or vegetative, earthy, spice type notes. Um, some of these can also come from yeast too, but typically you'll see them uh, coming from the, that type of hop. So a lot of English hops, right? A lot of English. So here's some. Um, there's some black tea too. So a lot of English, so to me, I always uh, equate English. So I always think, this is really bad. I always think English hops, I always associate, associate them with English. Like I always think English people are like kind of mellow, kind of boring. I know they drink tea a lot, so English hops to me are always, I'm sorry if I offended anybody that's from England or has family in from England. Um, but to me, yeah, they're, they're very mellow hop. So you have uh, Kenny Scolding, Fogel Hop. They tend to be very tea-like, a little earthy, but always very, very mellow. In a lot of English styles, you'll see too that hops don't necessarily play a big part. Um, so you'll start to get just hints of that, like very delicate. Um, sometimes it's hard to put your finger on uh, type of notes, but yeah. Yeah, for me, like American hops, I was like big and bold in your face. English hops tend to be like a little boring and also like I was just picture them drinking tea. Um, noble hops tend to be spicy. So I always think like kings and queens were like real sassy, so I think they're spicy. <laughs> <laughs> 